there are too many places where a regular person, let alone a YouTuber, can operate a locomotive, but believe it or not, there's one only 45 minutes from where I live. After nearly 20,000 miles on the rails, it's finally time to find out what happens up front. I've come to the North Carolina Transportation Museum to drive this train. Join me, this is gonna be unbelievable. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. Let's get inside and get this thing started. Before we get into how all this works and how you could do it yourself, let me share a bit about where we are. The North Carolina Transportation Museum, located in Spencer, North Carolina, about an hour north of Charlotte, just happens to be about 45 minutes from my home in Greensboro, North Carolina. And when the museum's organizers invited me to come down for the experience, I could barely contain my excitement. Well, first, exploring this place is a transportation enthusiast's dream. The museum started back in 1977 when the Southern Railway donated some land to the state of North Carolina for use as a museum. So it's absolutely full of all kinds of railway equipment. You could spend days in here. This is the back shop. This is where they did the heavy disassembly and all the work on the, those really massive steam locomotives. You're even able to get a ride on this passenger train here at the North Carolina Transportation Museum. The train operates on weekends and is popular among passengers of all ages. It runs along the same two miles of track I'm about to experience. And showing me around this massive facility was volunteer Bill Brookman. Well, the North Carolina Transportation Museum was an industrial site. It was built as the Southern Railway's main facility for overhauling steam locomotives and was opened in the late 1890s. As steam locomotives became obsolete, uh, this facility was used less and less so that the Southern Railway eventually closed it down in the 1970s and it was donated to the state and the state and the supporting foundation have made it into uh, what, what we have here now. We have, well, this being a former railroad facility, of course, we have a lot of railroad equipment including steam and diesel locomotives and passenger cars and freight cars. But we also have a lot of cars and trucks and even airplanes here. So this locomotive built in 1939 is one of the first diesel locomotives in the world. It also has the reputation of being one of the highest mileage diesel locomotives in the world with more than 6 million miles on it. It's a fantastic place to come to for the both the transportation and the history enthusiast. As much fun as we were having chatting, Let's get the real fun started. The Roundhouse dates back to 1924. It's the largest still operating in North America with 37 stalls and a 100-foot turntable still key to the museum's operations today. This turntable makes it uh, possible to get these, these locomotives, these engines in and out of uh, the Roundhouse. My experience began with a less than graceful climb to the top of this locomotive that dates from 1950. After a quick overview of the safety features and how everything worked, I was off. Like most new things, I was timid at first, but also, like most new things, with time, I became more comfortable. Essentially, I needed to get a feel for the controls and operate them smoothly. I was using the selector to set our direction and the independent brake controlled the brakes just for the locomotive. We were just pulling a caboose. And of course the throttle, oh, and, and the horn lever. That was the best part. Perfect. We may never have exceeded 10 or 15 miles per hour on this trip, but it felt a lot faster with so much machine behind me. It didn't hurt to have teachers in place to help me. Lane Baker, our train master, kept a close eye on me as our old friend Bill Brookman gave careful instructions. Low one small. And. Two short. And then low the last long. Together, they had me moving this massive machine along the track with relative ease. Even small hills can present challenges to giant locomotives like this one. Engineers need to know the track they're on like the back of their hand in order to anticipate power settings as they approach changes in slope, curves, or other obstacles along the way. This is unbelievable! So much of it is feel, but it's also take, it must take years to master it. I mean, after 15 minutes, I mean, I could get through, but I sure am glad to have some experts telling me exactly what to do. This is mind-blowingly complex. 
we're not dealing with the most modern technology here. I asked Bill to tell us a bit about this machine. Our engine number 6133, which was a FP7 type locomotive built by General Motors Electromotive Division in 1950. It has one 16 cylinder prime mover in it and it generates about 1500 horsepower. It's got no computer assistance or anything like in it. So it's got the cutting edge equipment of 1950. And so it's uh, a lot more basic technology than what we're used to today. During its heyday, this locomotive pulled both passenger and freight trains all over Southern Railway's network, which stretched from Atlanta to Washington, D.C. Like all passenger rail companies in the U.S., Southern eventually ceded its passenger services to Amtrak. And in 1982, Southern merged with Norfolk and Western to become Norfolk Southern Railway. Getting this machine rolling was, of course, a highlight. Having this much power literally in the palm of my, well, slightly sweaty hands was incredible. But there's something equally special about finally getting a smooth stop, too. Sitting at the front of this machine helped me realize just how much skill, experience, and training is required to make rail transportation possible. We do our best on this channel to highlight the many professionals who operate behind the scenes to make travel possible. And we'd like to say thank you to all of you who work hard every day to ensure travel by train is as safe as it possibly can be. And let's not forget the incredible work of the countless people who came before us, particularly at a time when rail travel was as ubiquitous as flying. The facility and the town that grew up around it was named for Samuel Spencer, the first president of the Southern Railway. At one time, over 2,000 people worked at Spencer Shops. But, as Bill said, with the advent of diesel locomotives, the facilities designed for steam locomotives began to be phased out. But thanks to this museum, the rail history here is still alive and well. If you're interested in booking this experience for yourself, head to the museum's website in the Events and Activities section. There, you'll find the At the Throttle opportunity when it's available. It's offered seasonally, and only when volunteers can host it. So keep your eyes on the North Carolina Transportation Museum's website. This was an unbelievable day. I learned so much about how these machines operate, and it takes so much more skill and feeling uh, than I think many of us realize. So next time you're on a train, don't forget to thank these guys, because they make it happen. Between now and the next time, see you on the rails. This is the uh, North Carolina Transportation's uh, roundhouse. This is the North Carolina Transportation's uh, rail. Uh, this is. <laughs> See now you're seeing how this is. This is how the sausage gets made.